In June 2010, the retired Navy destroyer Arthur W. Radford was transferred to the state of Delaware, the lead agency in a cooperative effort with New Jersey and Maryland to reef this 653-foot-long retired destroyer. This effort took 15 months and was accomplished with a budget under $1 million. Modifications to the vessel include lowering the vertical profile to 70 feet in order to accommodate safe navigation across the reef site, removal of any toxic or floatable materials, removal of all fuels and petroleum products, removal of all non-ferrous metals, and opening the structure of the vessel for diver access and safety. These openings also facilitate fish movement in and out of the structure. Following preparation, the vessel was towed to the permitted artificial reef site named Del Jersey Land Inshore Site to acknowledge the contributions of all three states. Final preparations on site were made by the marine contractor American Marine Group and included cutting additional holes just below the weather deck to facilitate sinking. use of a Cape May Lewis ferry allowed the press and additional parties to view the sinking on August 10th, 2011. On board were more than 30 ex-crew members of the Radford. Following final preparations, sea cocks were opened and the vessel was flooded. After nearly four hours the vessel sank upright in 135 feet of water, becoming the longest vessel ever reefed in the Atlantic. Several weeks after the sinking, Hurricane Irene passed over the site, with seas exceeding 20 feet in height. The bow section of the ship broke off just forward of the wheelhouse, and the storm moved the main section of the ship about 200 feet to the northeast. During the fall of 2011, following the sinking, sea bass and other reef fish were immediately attracted to the Radford because of its protective habitat, protecting fish from predation and strong currents. Invertebrate food available to support reef fish on the Radford was probably minimal at this time as reproduction is limited as temperatures decline in the fall and winter. By June of 2012, 10 months post sinking, the entire surface of the Radford can be seen to be completely covered by juvenile blue mussels about the size of your fingernail. Blue mussels spawn in late winter and early spring and their larvae are planktonic. They are dependent on hard substrate to support the adults. And this type of Habitat is rare in the Mid-Atlantic region. Larvae can travel long distances in the water and are present in high densities. There are literally billions of juvenile mussels on the uh, large amount of surface area of this vessel. What appears to be a monoculture of blue mussels there's actually several dozen species of invertebrates, including
including crabs, worms, shrimp, and other bivalves. This community can provide up to 400 times the amount of food per square foot as would be encountered on natural sand bottom. The value of this annual crop in increasing feeding efficiency to reef fish is obvious. During October 2012, 14 months after sinking, a five-year biological monitoring effort was initiated. Quantitative scrape samples were taken by divers from horizontal and vertical surfaces to assess invertebrate populations over time. Both pelagic fish, here bluefish, and reef fish like black sea bass are characteristic of high profile structures like the Radford. If this were a tropical reef, fish diversity would be higher with fewer individuals and many species. Temperate reefs like the Radford are characterized by higher numbers of fewer species such as sea bass, tautog, cod, and pollock. Over the summer of 2012, the blue mussels have grown and are now one to two inches in length. Grazing on mussel clusters by reef fish has reduced their coverage on all surfaces and other invertebrates such as anemones and encrusting colonial invertebrates have become established. Reef fish have the benefit of enhanced feeding opportunities and the protection of interior spaces. Pelagic fish including bluefish, jacks, tuna, and even barracuda are attracted by the disruption of tidal currents by the high profile ship. This holds bait fish which attract the pelagic predators. The whole food chain is represented on the reef. October 2013, we are now 26 months post sinking and at the end of the second growing season for the invertebrate community on the Radford. The ob first obvious difference is that the vessel appears to have moved and now is listing significantly to starboard. The main deck is no longer flat, but at about a 40 to 45 degree angle. The 2012 year class of mussels is now 2 to 3 inches in length. And grazing by reef fish and natural invertebrate succession and storm damage all continue to change the invertebrate community. In places, blue mussels no longer cover the majority of surfaces. In 
places you can see clusters of very small mussels among the larger ones. This is a 2013 year class, now about six months old. document activities on the Radford, we note that the size and number of black sea bass present can vary significantly from week to week or even from day to day. It's true especially at this time of year in October when the fish are migrating generally southward and offshore. Fish may build up for a period of time and then school up and move across the open bottom to their next destination. At this point, we're moving toward the bow along the side of the vessel on the port side, and you can see significant damage to some of the steel plates along this area. This was post-sinking damage, probably caused when the bow of the vessel was torn off during Hurricane Irene several weeks after the sinking. about the level of the weather deck, We're looking up at the superstructure as we slowly move toward the bow where the bow of the ship was disconnected.
watch the area at the base of the wheelhouse. You can see the jagged edge where Hurricane Irene broke the bow section off of the ship. A murky structure to the left and ahead is the bow of the ship. Superstorm Sandy, which moved up the coast in late October 2012, has moved the main section of the hull 200 feet to the southwest, perfectly reversing its path during Hurricane Irene the year before. The two sections of the ship are now adjacent to one another. See the main section of the ship to the right, the bow section to the left with the V-shaped gap 